Hey guys, welcome to my Soulfist endgame guide. The Soulfist heavily relies on burst windows. When her identity skill is up, you will deal very high damage with your ultimate and your burst skills. After that, you will have some downtime until your identity skill is up again. Now, let's get into her skills. Her main mobility skill is Flash Step. I recommend to level the skill to level 7 and take excellent mobility and victory shout. If you're still in early game and do not have enough skill points, you can also leave the skill at level 4 and take excellent mobility. Flash Step is perfect as a gap closer or if you want to disengage the enemy. It can also be used for dodging. If you leveled the skill to level 7 and took victory shout, then I recommend to use the skill 3 times for the buff and then follow up with your main DPS skill. Next, we have Lightning Palm. Lightning Palm is mainly used to counter enemies. Level the skill to level 4 and take Prepared Attacker. So you get a slight attack power boost and then follow up with one of your DPS skills. Next up, we have a very good ranged DPS skill, Heavenly Squash. I recommend to level the skill to level 10 and take Heart Hitter, Burning Hands and Exquisite Attack. It is also okay to leave the skill at level 7 if you do not have enough skill points. Next up, we have another mobility skill, Pulverizing Palm. I recommend to level the skill to level 7, take excellent mobility for the extra dash range and then ready attack for a very good attack power boost. After using this skill as a gap closer, follow up with your main DPS skill. Next up, we have Shadow Breaker, which is a very good DPS skill and is very good for staggering and weak point destruction. I recommend to level the skill to level 10 and take Predator, weak point detection. You can also take Concussion if there is a stagger check. And for your third tripod, take 6 cents. Next up, we have Force Orb. Level the skill to level 10 and take Quick Prep, Powerful Wave and Scattering Wave. It is very important to use the skill in melee range, so all three orbs hit the boss. Merciless Pummel is your main DPS skill. I strongly recommend to level the skill to level 10 and take Heart Hitter, Cold Hearted and Double Up. It is very important to buff your damage first and then follow up with Merciless Pummel. The Soulfist has different skills that can buff your damage, so choose any of these that are available to you. And lastly, we have your very strong buff Energy Release. Level the skill to level 10 and take Fighting Spirit, Energy Release and Ready Attack. This buff is your main DPS buff. Use this skill with either your ultimate or your main DPS skill, Merciless Pummel. Energy Release is also a very good defensive tool thanks to the second tripod, Energy Release Enhancement. If you want, you can also take the tripod, Shout of Purification. Later on, there will be raids where it is important to cleanse the debuff of your party members and yourself of course. So decide which one is better for the raid you want to go in. Now, let's talk about your ultimate. Vault Decimation is a very high burst DPS ultimate. The problem is that the charging time is very slow. So the boss might just run away while you are still charging the skill. Then we have Decimation Ray. Decimation Ray is easier to use and faster. It does a lot less damage though. I recommend to use World Decimation because the damage is very very high. And if that skill hits, it's going to deal very high DPS. I recommend to always have your identity up when you want to use your ultimate and to use energy release before for more DPS. If you are missing your level 50 skill and your awakening skill, go to Beatrice and accept the purple quest. For your second ultimate, finish the Rohandel story and take the purple quest from the NPC in front of the palace. If you want to unlock your ultimate for your alt character and finish the Rohandel quest already on your main, go to Beatrice and get your second ultimate 
there. Let's talk about your engravings. Take Robust Bird for your class engraving, as this lets you enter hype mode faster, increases your damage, and increases your energy recovery speed. For your combat engraving, take Awakening, so you can use your ultimate more often. I recommend to level Awakening as high as possible. For your class engraving, you can leave it at level 1 and instead focus more on Awakening. Another great option is Adrenaline. Adrenaline increases your attack power and your critical rate. This is perfect if you want your ultimate to crit. Master of Ambush is also a very good engraving that has no downside. It increases your back attack damage. This is very important for your main DPS skill, Merciless Pummel. Pulverizing Palm and Shadow Breaker also use back attacks. When you reach tier 3 and have more resources to level up engravings, you can also take Grudge to level 3. It is very important to not take Grudge when you only can level it to level 1 and 2, as this decreases your survivability. The same can be said to Curse Doll. Only take it when you can level this engraving to level 3. Now, let's talk about your stats. The Soul Fist heavily concentrates on specialization. Specialization increases your overall damage when you're in your identity mode. It also lets you recover your hype faster and most importantly your ultimate guilds with specialization. So get this stat as high as possible. As your secondary stat, go critical. It is very important for your ultimate to crit to have even higher numbers. For your card set, there are different options. If you want more critical, Take the Lost Wind Cliff card set. If you want to have high survivability, combine We Will Meet Again with Forest of Giants. At late game, some of the raid bosses will deal dark damage and will be weak to holy damage. In these raids, Light of Salvation is your best card set. So that's it for my endgame guide for the Soul Fist. I hope you guys liked it and see you next time.